Hi and welcome to another episode of Reaper TV. In this quick video I'm going to show you something that you may not be aware of or you may not have looked into and that's the effects that are built in to your audio interface. We're going to take a look at what's on offer. I'm using a Roland Quad Capture for this example and depending upon the interface you're using you may have less or more options available. So for example if you were looking like a universal audio you may have a DSP or digital signal processor built into that which gives you a whole range of effects that you can run alongside your interface which will then go into your digital audio workstation. With this example, we're going to keep it really simple, but I want you to check out yours and see what you have available. So let's take a look at all that right now. Okay, so if I open up my audio interface, you can see that the software I have with it is the Quad Capture Control Panel. It's a pretty simple, straightforward control panel. There's only really two inputs we can deal with on this, so it's really simple. But what you can see is we've got the preamp option, which allows us to control the input volume. We can apply a low-pass filter. We can invert the phase on there and so on. So that's pretty good. The low-pass is great if you've got someone or some kind of input signal that's really, really bass-heavy and you find that that's just sort of muddy and things up a little bit then you can apply that low cut to it what I'm interested in though is the compressor section so what this means is that I can enable or disable a compressor on either of my inputs now the reason this is pretty useful is the fact that when I'm input in something for example a voiceover or if I'm dealing with guitars or drums or something it's very easy for those things to clip when you might not realize it now it could be one of those things, just one or two transients in the entire sort of recording that you're doing that just kind of peek out a little bit, but that could potentially ruin a recording. So having a built-in compressor really does help. Is it perfect? Not by any stretch of the imagination, but it's good to have it there. So if we take a look at the compressor section, you can see we've got two inputs. We've got the top one, which is bypassed. In other words, there's no compression being applied to that, even though I actually have no input going in there at the moment. I'm using channel two for this particular recording. Now, if we take a look at channel two, let's take a look at the options that this gives us. You can see we've got the bypass option, which means that we can completely bypass this compressor. So nothing has been applied to the, to the actual audio as it's been recorded. No compression at all. Next up, we've got the amount of compression that's been applied if this is activated. So you can see we've got this in minus dB. So in other words, the sort of the further down that red bar comes, the more compression is being applied to the input signal to ensure that it doesn't clip. The right hand meter is showing us how much makeup gain is being applied so we can increase the amount of gain on there to get a higher signal. I won't do that because obviously I'm recording while I'm doing this. We've then got the sort of the curve, the arc of amount of sort of compression versus the amount of input volume is being applied and so on and the way that that actually is being applied. So you can see as we adjust these, you can see that makes a difference to the actual I can't say curve, but the line, the effect that you're going to apply, the ratio, the attack and release and so on. So all these things that you used to see inside a compressor are all evident inside my quad capture software. But like I say, this is being done on a hardware level. This is being done with the actual interface itself. So like I say, we can just make sure that we don't clip. So what I'll do is I'll run a quick test now. I'll bring the volume down, but it's going to show you what's happening. So I'm going to use Reaper to do this. We'll hit a record track. I'll do it so loud that we will see some peaking. So keep your eye on the actual compression that's being applied. And you'll also take a look then at what happens in the actual recording itself inside Reaper. Okay, so I've armed my track in Reaper. So as you can see, the meters are showing. If I talk loudly, you can see that that stops any peaking problem. Take a look at the actual compressor inside my quad capture software and you should see as I get louder, this will actually start to kick in and reduce the ability to clip. It will affect the audio. It doesn't give a perfect representation, but obviously, like I say, this isn't a particularly expensive interface. More expensive interfaces, more modern interfaces may well have much better options. And I'm not really going through and tweaking the actual compressor itself to get the optimal settings. I just want to demonstrate what you can do. So let's hit record in Reaper. Now this is going to drop the interface out for my compressor, but don't worry too much about that. Okay, so let's hit record. One, two, one, two, one, two. So what you should see there is even though I'm going loud and I'm potentially would be peaking, you can see that nothing is clipping off on the actual audio recorded. We can expand this out as much as we want. You can see nothing is actually peaking. So I've set the compression rate and I've set everything on there to make sure that I don't peek out 
and cause any clipping issues. Like I say, you will get some detrimental effects to the audio because at the end of the day, the compressor is doing a pretty hard job. But this is part of your audio interface. It gives you that option should you need it. And that's really what I wanted to show you. Just to go in, take a look at the software you have with the audio interface that you use to record your audio. See what options are available. See what functions you have in there. As a bare minimum, I can imagine they're going to have some kind of compressor as part of it. More expensive ones, more options. Well, I hope you found this quick tip useful. If you did, please hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all of the new content we add every single week. Got any comments, questions, or feedback on this video, please pop this in the comment section below. Don't forget to give the video a like and hit that subscribe button and hit the bell icon to be notified every time a new video is released. Until next time, happy mixing.